In the last video we produced a very simple model to estimate the duration of our site and in this video I would like to show you how you can extend this model or make it more useful by introducing stratigraphic information. I haven't said it to you now but there is a little diff other option here in Oxcal if you like my colleague Regine Stapfer and prefer to have the dates in a stratigraphic order you can always use this button here and change the view to a stratigraphic order where the oldest is actually at the bottom and the youngest are is at the top. If you look into the code this doesn't change the order in your code. Here it stays like it is. Oxcal always prefers this chronological order where the oldest is on top and the youngest is at the bottom. But we have here in our example uh, uh, imaginary stratigraphy where we have the burial 20 and 29 at the bottom and then we have burial 18 and 32 and burial 42 and 31 in a phase which in which we cannot distinguish the um, the order of these two burial groups so to say to do two phases and then we have the burial 27 here on top and we can use this information to reflect that in our phase sequence by adding the burials in the correct order into phases and separating them by boundaries. So here I will just immediately start with working with the code view itself um, and I will just copy paste some commands here or write some phases in there because now we have multiple phases, we have three phases and inside of this middle phase we have more phases. So with that we have now this kind of view in the stratigraphic view. Currently our dates are just placed here somewhere in between. We have a starting phase, then we have a phase within we have two phases and then we have a, a final phase here with our last burial switch back to the chronological view here that we have it in line with the code. Okay, now I can use the individual dates here and place them in the correct order starting with the oldest phase. So this is my phase 1. Then I have here my phase 2 where I have two sub phases or two phases which I cannot distinguish chronologically. I call that phase 2a and phase 2b and then the last phase I call phase 3. Of course you can change these names however you like. I will also remove the span here. You could leave it inside here but it just will prolong the calculation of the model so in that case I just move it out but you can could always use that. So this is my oldest date and it belongs actually to the oldest burial here. Um, so I move that into my phase one and I don't do that to be perfectly clear because it's the oldest date but because I know from a stratigraphy that this is actually the oldest date so I add here this additional information from the stratigraphy and not sorting just the dates according to their uncalibrated age. These are the two dates for my phase 2a these are two dates for my phase to be and the last dates here or actually this date also belongs to that phase to that burial and this is the last date that belongs to my oldest date and this belongs here again um, this is like the stratigraphy looks like so our youngest date is this one then we have these two phases here to phase 2b and 2a and this is the oldest one here this is ah now I see the mistake here actually this belongs to here because there are two burials and this belongs here because these are also two burials and we have an individual date for each burial. Now I can switch back to this um, graphical user interface view and again I can turn that around to have the stratigraphic view whatever you prefer in the code it will always be this view here. Now we have separated these individual burials into phases and now I can 
or need to put boundaries between these burials here. So I have a boundary between my phase 1 and my phase 2 and I will call that 1 to 2 and I have a boundary between my phase 2 and my phase 3 and I will call that 2 to 3. I have no boundaries between these two phases because they are in a phase, they don't have any sequential information, they are not coming from a stratigraphy where I can distinguish between these two temporal settings here, so it doesn't make any sense to put a boundary here. In that case, here we assume that this phase 1 and this phase 2 are directly connected via stratigraphy and that's why we're putting only one boundary here. If we don't have this information, because probably the burials are located far away, but we know for other reasons that they are uh, coming in between, so we need to assume that there might be a gap. You also can put up two boundaries for the end of phase 1 and another boundary for the start of phase 2. So you would have two boundaries here side by side and in that case there is the possibility for a gap in between while well, here we're saying that phase 2 directly starts after phase 1 with having just one boundary here. That's something that you need to keep in mind if you're modeling more complex situations where you don't have direct uh, stratigraphic connection between two phases. Now we have everything in place here. We still have the sequence with a boundary for the start of the whole sequence here. Then our first phase with a boundary distinguishing this from the next phase, phase 2. There we have these two phases in between. The boundary from phase 2 to phase 3 and then the last date with from the last burial here. Now I will already again click on run and let's see how long this time the model will run. So this time the model run much faster than our first attempt with the simple model. Only after 400,000 iterations we get here a final solution for our sequence and that was already an indication in the a uh, simpler model in the first one that there was something wrong with the modeling. Now everything looks okay here, we don't have any warnings, but we have some modeled situation. You can see again that the C14 dates are more condensed than in the unmodeled situation already from this table here. And if we look at the multiplot, we can also see that there is some, this light gray area, which is the unconstrained model or the unmodeled date, um, is removed due to our boundaries and due to the connection of the individual dates here. Especially we see an overlap between phase 3 and the phases, the models the, or the dates from phase 2 where due to the information from the stratigraphy we could exclude some probabilities from the later phases of these dates here and make the model more condensed. Still, there is a small probability left here and if we look at the 95% confidence interval, which we al shall always should do, this still counts as full probability of the uh, within this confidence interval. But here, for example, at the end of these dates, there is some light gray area that has been removed from the dark gray area, meaning that our modeling could um, shrink the actual calibrated results from the date and with that we get a nicer and more condensed st uh, stratigraphy or chronology of the site here. As I have said before, the more uh, constraints from the stratigraphy you can introduce, the more um, condensed your model will be. And if you have very, very large stratigraphies, for example, from tell settlements where you have a lot of layers, um, you will notice probably that there will still be some warnings here in the final model that there is a low agreement, but this is not necessarily uh, a sign that the whole model is wrong. The more constraints you introduce here, the more likely it is that some of these constraints will end up in an unlikely situation, but if the stratigraphy is correct and this imposes these constraints in a correct way, you can safely ignore these uh, warnings. Still, every time you see a warning, you should be aware that there might be something wrong and check against your original data to see if actually everything is correct. Okay, now you have a very short introduction or short view 
on how you can do a stereographical model using OxCal. There's of course a lot more to this. For example, if you have doubtful dates, you can always add a outlier model to make these dates or to classify these dates as probably outliers, probably problematic, and this will then also influence the whole modeling. And uh, you can of course go wild with the um, details of this stratigraphy. The more you have, the more complex your model in the end will be, but also the better and more interesting your results might be. I hope this is useful for you and I'm looking forward seeing you in the practical session where we'll try that out um, by hand. <laughs>